I was sitting back in study between service and, and um, I didn't get to preach my message uh, this morning in first service and um, I thought, well, Lord, what, just what, was, what are you going to do in the second service? And the praise and worship was so magnificent that I didn't want to miss what God was doing in the house. And I wanted to be sensitive to that. And uh, God laid on, on this, this passage, this great this passage of praise in 2 Chronicles 20. 2 Chronicles 20, and I'm going to begin in verse 5. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 5. And Jehoshaphat, again, this is the uh, King James, large print. <laughs> that that means it has a larger anointing on it. Some of y'all's Bibles has such tiny print, you just can't get anything out of it. <laughs> Got to get the big print. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, now let me tell you, he, he was in a pickle. Five armies were gathered against him. Uh, he was up against it. He did not have the uh, military wherewithal to make a stand at all against the approaching enemy. His days were numbered. He was outnumbered. He was in a pickle. Uh, let me just tell you, when you're in a pickle is the time to praise. Come on. He said in verse 5, he stood in the house of the Lord. There's something about being in the house of the Lord. Uh, I was raised in the church, been in the church all my life, and and uh, we, Debbie and I hardly ever miss church. Now, we were on vacation this last week, and uh, we, we came this close to backsliding because we missed a church service. And uh, we just slept and read books and looked at the ocean, and uh, it, was, it was absolutely fantastic. But you can only do that for a couple of days, and then it's time to get back and get back into the river and get back to church. And we're so excited this morning to get up and knowing that we are coming back to church to be with God's people, lifting up God's name. So... Um, He's in church and he said in verse 6, he said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? That's a good place to start. Uh, God, you're God, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Amen. And ruleth thou not over the kingdoms of the heathen and in thy hand? Is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Uh, what Joseph was doing is uh, he was resetting all the gauges within his spiritual life. He says, you know, sometimes you got to push that, that reset button and uh, make sure that everything is working just right and you know what you know and you believe what you believe and you got things straightened out again. And, and so what Jehoshaphat was doing right here was just getting himself reset. He's like, uh, hey, you're God. You have all power. You're on my side. I'm standing in your house. This is going to be okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Verse 7. Art thou not our God, who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and given it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? And there thou dwelleth there, and they dwelleth therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, He said, This is this is what you told us to say. If evil comes before us as a sword in judgment or pestilence or famine, we should stand in this house, in thy presence. Everybody say thy thy presence. Listen, listen. When the world is arrayed against you, you need to run to the house of God. You need to run to your prayer closet. You need to run to your altar. You need to find the presence of God. What you need is the presence of God. I'm going to tell you, what you need above all things is the presence. Come on. We don't need a grander light show. No, 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 no. We don't. Hey, we think we need a lot of things, but what we really need is the presence of God. I said what we really need is the presence of God. Hallelujah. 
We are to stand before thee in this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house. His name is his nature. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. He's Jehovah Jireh, your provider. He's Jehovah Nissi, your victory banner. He's Jehovah Sidkenu, your righteousness. He's Jehovah Shalom, your peace. He's Jehovah Rohi, your shepherd. I could keep on going, but he is what you have need of because he's the Alpha to the Omega. He's the author. He's the finisher of your faith. There is nothing in him that you cannot find that you have need of that he won't supply to you because the Bible says you are complete in him. Hallelujah. Come in here. Your name is in this house. Everything that we have need of is in your name. Is in this house. And cry to thee in our affliction and thou will hear us and you will help us. Thank God. And now behold the children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir. Thou wouldst not, you, you wouldn't let Israel invade. But they came out of the land of Egypt and they turned against them, destroyed them. And behold, I say, this is how they reward us. They've come to cast us out of thy possession. Listen, the devil wants to remove you from your blessing. The devil wants to cast you out of your possession, your inheritance of what is rightfully yours in Christ Jesus. Which you gave us. You gave it to us, Lord. It's our inheritance. You gave it to us. They want to take it away from us. Oh, our God, in verse 12, will you not judge them? For we have no might against thee, this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. We just don't know what to do. But our eyes are fixed upon you. Hey, the only way you can fix your eyes upon him is if he is in your presence. My eyes are fixed upon you. And all Judah stood before the Lord and their little ones, their wives, and their children. Hey, let me tell you, it's a good time to get everybody gathered together into the house of God. It's time for the family to rise up in the house of God. It's time for the little ones to be raised up in the house of God. I was raised up in the house of God. I from nursery on I was in the house of God I was in youth group I was in kids choir I was in middle school choir I was in junior high choir I was in adult choir I was an acolyte I lit the candles I was in morning service I was in evening service I was in Sunday night service with youth group my parents were the youth group counselors don't you know I was going to be in youth group I was in everything that you could possibly be in if there was a retreat I was on that retreat if there was a bus trip somewhere I was on that bus trip and I had two older brothers to make sure I was behaving myself all the time. We were raised up in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you want your children to be like me, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. No, you want your children to be like you, who you are in God. Amen. All the children stood before the Lord, their little ones, their wives, and their children. And upon them, upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of uh, Jeriel, the son of Mattaniah, the uh, Levite of Asaph, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him in the midst of the congregation and said, Hearken ye all Ju uh, Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the king of Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, it is God's. I said the battle is not yours, it is God's. Now, you got to be in the presence of God to hear that. You got to be where the Spirit is falling to hear that. You got to be in a place where it allows the Spirit to come upon the man of God and the man of God to tell you what the Spirit of God is saying in order to hear that. And the great problem with the body of Christ is we're spread all over the place and we haven't got a hearing ear anymore when we need to be coming into the congregation, into the presence of God to hear what God has to say to the church. Because we're believing right now that who, who is outside those walls and outside those doors is bigger than what the church is. They're not bigger than what the church is. Oh, they may sound like they're big. They may sound like they're ferocious, but let me tell you, the church is triumphant because God is on the side of the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord came in the midst of the congregation. Look at that sentence right there. The Spirit of the Lord came in the midst of the congregation. And he said, the battle is not yours. 
It is God. Tomorrow you go down against them. Behold, they, they come up by the cliff of, of, of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before in the, in the wilderness of Jeruel, and you will not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand you still, and see the salvation of the Lord is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord worshiping I said worshiping worshiping saying you are worth me believing you you are worth it I believe your worth I apply worth and value and honor to the word that I just heard hallelujah Woo. And the Levites and the children of the Korathites and the children of Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. I'm thankful for a noisy church. <laughs> hey, I grew up in a quiet church. I'm thankful for a noisy church. I grew up in a church. You couldn't say nothing, do nothing. You couldn't move. Everybody just sit there like stones. But hey, I'm glad for a noisy church. I'm glad for a church. That can, that can, come on. I'm glad for a church that can clap your hands. Oh, ye people, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Verse 20, they rose up early in the morning, went forth in the wilderness of Tekoa, and they came forth. Jehoshaphat stood before them. Hear me, O, Jerus o Judah, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you will prosper. Amen. Believe his prophetic word, the word of God, and you will what? Prosper. You will what? Prosper. Hallelujah. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army. Who went out first? The singers went. The praisers went. The worshipers went before the army. I said before the army. Hallelujah. And that's what they said. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. <laughs> Then they took another step. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. 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 Some of y'all, when you get up in the morning, you're getting dressed for work, and you're thinking, oh, Lord of mercy, I have to go to that place again. You need to start saying, praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Some of y'all in your house, you're praying for peace in your home, peace with your children, peace with your spouse, peace with the in-laws, peace here, peace there, peace everywhere. Well, I'm telling you what, you need to start saying, praise the Lord, uh, His mercy endureth forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whew. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, which came out against Judah, and they were smitten. As they began to sing, they were smitten. As, they be, as, as Israel began to sing, the enemy was smitten. Hallelujah. The, the devil can't handle your praise. Ooh, it just sends confusion into his encampments. He can't handle your praise. You know why? Because your praise exalts the name that's above every name. Your praise magnifies his word. Your praise invites his presence, for he inhabits the praises of his people. When you start praising him, the devil starts thinking, oh no, we need to get out of town. This, this thing is turning bad. We need to pack up and go home. Come on, say amen. The Lord set ambushments against them. I wish some time our eyes could just be unveiled for a moment when we're praising God and seeing the holy angels of the Most High sweep into the church of Jesus Christ and set ambushments against the enemy in regions. I'm telling you what, there's enemies rooted, grounded 
in, in certain regions and the, and the holy angels of God can rout them when there's a praising people. Can rout them when there's a praising church. Can rout them when the church knows the power of the blood, the power of the word, the power of praise. Hallelujah. And the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Sur. <laughs> They're turning on each other. Utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Mount Sur, everyone helped to destroy the other. Your praise causes the devil to slay himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when Judah came forward to watch over the tower of the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies, bodies fallen onto the earth, and none escaped. Hallelujah. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering the spoil. It was so much. Hallelujah. 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 